Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the PMP Knives Alpha Smilodon. This is a big knife, but if you're hearing PMP, you're probably thinking, oh, it's one of those big, crazy, ultra thick knives, right? Actually, no, they gave this one a reasonable geometry. It's still a huge knife, um, but it's uh, <laughs> in a pleasing way. Uh, I've got a lot to say about it. Thanks so much to PMP for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I believe this knife is available in a few different forms. I'm gonna try and link it right down below so that you guys can check it out. I'll also link PMP knives in general because they have a lot of really cool stuff that I think many of you will enjoy. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this very large knife, overall length of the, by the way, uh, the common response that I get after showing this is that looks like a Koenig Arius. I guess I can kind of understand why people assume that the um, like the, like some of the lines, right? Like, especially the blade. Um, handling this and the Konigaris though, anybody who's ever handled both will tell you it's not, they're night and day. They, they honestly, other than some very subtle similarities in like blade and handle shape, they could not be more different. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that's, uh, that's a somewhat reasonable generic observation. Let's go ahead and, um, measure it overall length if you're going to the back of the knife it's nine and a quarter if you want to go to the glass breaker it's nine and a half inches blade length 3.85 inches cutting edge also now nah, 3.75 inches on the cutting edge let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the ontario rad model one there we go perspective this is a big old honking chunk of titanium and steel here uh up against the ontario rat one and two how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? Let me get that out there real quick. There we are. And last but not least, let's go ahead and put it up against the Dem... Mm, yeah, I'll, you know what? We'll do the Demco 8020.5. We'll do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And finally, the Benchmade Bug Out for whatever reason, right? If you're looking to transition from the Benchmade Bug Out to the PMP Alpha Smilodon, well, here you go, right? How's the action on this guy? Uh, the action is false shut, and I think mostly due to the fact that we have a very large blade. As you can see, this thing is a guillotine. It's smooth right here, right here. Nope, I'm sorry, right. It's actually a lot higher than I thought. Um, but there's a point where it really wants to fall, and you really gotta get your fingers out of the way, because there's a lot of blade coming down, and it's it actually is very sharp. This is uh, not a geometry that's like, oh, it's big and thick and can't slice, no. It's definitely a uh, fairly slicey geometry. So that much blade coming down on your finger, you really gotta watch out for it. It's almost too smooth. <laughs> Very satisfying to deploy, right? Uh, the flipper tab can be used to um, push button it or light switch it. I'm more of a fan of light switching it. It feels like I'm getting a little more of that transition, a little bit more of that uh, power translation from my finger. What the heck is he talking about? No double clutch or anything like that and plenty easy to disengage on the lock bar since they did a nice big cut out there. So yeah, overall, action's very good. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the PM2 and Pair 3. Actually, first thickness, that might surprise you. It is really just a, just a little bit thicker. Just a little bit thicker than the Spider Compare. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's a big boy, right? But it's probably not as thick as, as you might ex, uh, have expected. Anytime... We have alpha in the name of anything in the knife world, right? People expect this big hulking monstrosity. Um, let's go ahead and do PM2 pair of three, uh, length and height. So this guy's very tall and very long. I mean, you're gonna notice it in the pocket unless you have exclusively carried large knives. Cold Steel fans will let you know right down in the comments section if you'd like to, to see. They're down there, they're always down there. I'm just messing with you, Cold Steel fans. It's just really easy to guess what you're gonna say. Um, let's go ahead and do, um, let's let's measure the blade stock thickness here if I can find my calipers, there they are, God. I swear those things get up and run off. Everything else is in the same place, but the calipers are always, it's like when I'm done with them, I just hook them across the room. All right, 
Uh, blade stock thickness, PMP uh, Alpha Smalodon coming in at 157 thousandths. Not ultra thick, but definitely still on the thicker side. Um, weight, this is titanium and M390. I can't remember, I don't think they milled it out. No, they did. They actually did do a little bit of milling on the inside, which is nice, but um, it's still gonna come in pretty heavy. I'm gonna guess that this thing weighs well over seven ounces, perhaps even over eight. Yeah, 8.8, 8.8, point, sorry, 8.4 ounces. My scale likes to throw curveballs at me at the last minute. So yeah, 8.4 ounces balance. Yeah, actually, you know what? It's right there, whoops. Sorry, getting all wobbly today. Uh, bless it, it's almost right in the middle of where you're gonna put your finger. So it really doesn't feel that crazy, right? Depends on how you're you know, holding it. But once you've got it in hand like this, it really doesn't feel that crazy for such a large knife. Okay, hardware check. Let's get all my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. That's a T7 for some reason. I don't know why that one was out. I'm pretty sure all of the hardware on this guy is going to be a T8. Let's give it a go here real quick. What the heck? Is that a... <laughs> is that a T7? Maybe that's why I had the T7 out. No, no, it's just a shallow T8. Um, okay, pivot's a little bit shallow, honestly. And, you know, here's the other thing. I think I need a new T8 bit. That one's pretty chewed up. Uh, lock bar insert screw, T8. Body screws, T8. Pocket clip screws, also T8. Minimal, well, there's a couple in it. I'll take the large size fasteners um, over, you know, total number, like minimizing the total number of um, fasteners, right? Not bad. Make sure you have quality tools and a place to put your hardware and your bits and everything like that, and you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this review. Um, this is a, uh, despite being, it's, it's like holding on to a knife-shaped grenade. Um, it's actually pretty comfortable. The edges are uh, nicely knocked down and there's some big chamfering areas right here before we get into this frag texturing, which looks a lot more aggressive than it is. Honestly, all of the edges to each of these individual little squares are nicely knocked down. This is a really comfortable knife and uh, this area in here is nice and deep. The transition from this area to the flat area is also not aggressive, so you can kind of move around a little bit, and you honestly have quite a few different ergonomic options for these, uh, this knife. And, you know, it's such a big open area that uh, however you decide to hold it, it's, it's gonna be pretty friendly, you know? Um, I like this ramp back here. The jimping right here is also really nice. Um, the, uh, the, the overall ergonomic experience is honestly a lot better than I thought. Even the pocket clip, which is not my favorite by a long shot, and I've got more to complain about there. Even that, I'm not really noticing it, right? Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. This particular one has the flamed titanium, which I always like. I think they did a black one and maybe, maybe one other version, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it looks good, looks clean. The blade, definitely uh, similar overall blade shape to the Koenig Arius, and I mean, truthfully, you know, let's not stop there. <laughs> this blade shape's been around long before the Arius did a slight variation of it, right? Um, this is uh, a drop point with a little bit of a thumb ramp, right? It's not that unique of a blade shape, but it looks good, nice and tall. Big flat up here, carrying a good amount of thickness out to about 80% the length of the blade. Nice swedge, comes down to a little bit of a tip, right? Definitely a strong blade shape. This is M390. Uh, so if you're gonna get any additional toughness out of that composition, you are gonna need a more robust geometry. It does drop down to a surprisingly thin edge, just considering the size of this knife. I'll give you guys an example of what a piece of paper looks like after you cut with this using the factory edge. It's not bad, right? It'll slice, no problem, and honestly, I think I can probably, you know, I probably made a couple of acrylic cues just um, on the uh, previous cut th cuts there, yeah. It'll do it, and even like the tops of these were curling, right, so that edge can get under there. It's lifting a little bit, so we're seeing like lips on the edge of the paper, 
which means it's not a perfectly clean slice. But then again, this is just the factory edge and I'm just cutting paper, right? Your mileage will vary depending on whether or not you decide to reprofile this edge. And uh, it really is gonna depend on what you cut. But right out of the box, it definitely is sharp enough to easily slice paper, right? Um, so there you go. It's got kind of a dark, sort of concrete tumbled finish on it, looks good. They insisted on putting Alpha Smilodon on the knife, which you guys know I always hate it when they name the knife on. Imagine getting a tattoo of your own name on your forehead. That's what it makes me think of, right? Henry! Great. No one will ever forget your name, but uh, does it look, does it look good? Is it worth it? Nah, I don't think so, right? Um, I don't mind the PMP, you know, or the menu, the maker's logo. I just don't understand why we have to have the name of it on the blade, right? Anyways, M390 back here, a little bit of a sharpening choil, which is nice, right? The edge looks good. Honestly, fit and finish all the way around looks good. PMP has always done a good job with fit and finish. Uh, the first PMP I handled was about four years ago and um, they have only gotten better and their, you know, their uh, manufacturing quality was good back then. Honestly, really like the frag texturing. I don't think we see it enough. A lot of people say, you know, whenever it's frag texturing that they're copying Monkey Edge or something. I, it's really hard for me to accept that anybody owns a pattern of squares. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, but, you know, it's not really up to me. I don't know, right? It's just like kind of a funny thing to be like, I own that, huh? Series of squares, that's mine. Um, I don't know. Uh, my opinion is that, nah, you know, they're squares, right? Um, so it looks good. That's, uh, that's really all I have to say about that. It looks nice and it kind of goes with the really ultra super masculine theme of this knife, right? The alpha theme. Um, so yeah, there's a little backspacer. Well, I say little, it's actually a fairly large backspacer back here, also titanium. We have what is most likely a tungsten carbide glass break if it's not tungsten car maybe it's it's ceramic i'm not really sure there's a glass breaker back there i'm sure it will work if you need to break glass right pocket clip is deep clear carry let me tell you this is this was a a massive um massive failure here we have number one a very pinchy um ceramic ball uh clip right these are already pinchy on a smooth surface it ain't smooth under there. They didn't smooth that out. So it's literally writing right on top of the frag texturing. This is a nightmare to get in and out of the pocket. It is every time I pull it, I think I'm gonna pull really hard and it's gonna pull, but then it's gonna slip out of my hands and I'm gonna huck it across the room and hit somebody in the face with it. Um, this, that really needed to be smoothed out under there. That, that really just makes no sense whatsoever. So, eh, bummer. Um, the clip is nice and it is 3D milled titanium and not a simple stamped clip. So that's really cool. We have a couple of standoffs back here, right? Which looks all right. Uh, the pivots. Initially, I thought maybe the pivot was the over travel stop. I don't know if it's actually lipped in there. It is. So um, <laughs> can you see? I don't know if you're actually going to be able there, right there. This is lipped. It's actually catching this pivot disc and we have an additional over travel stop here. Uh, the steel lock bar insert is also the overtravel. So there's <laughs> there's no way you're gonna disengage. They, they doubled up on the overtravel stops there. Um, there's the uh, lock up coming in. It looks really, really early, right? But the actual engagement, you might not be able to see it on the tang. I don't know if we actually see. Can we see right there, that dark mark? We're probably coming in at about 25% or more, maybe even 30% engagement. Yeah, 25% solid engagement on that. Uh, no blade play, up, down, left, or right, no hint of slip or anything, no lock stick at all, no pivot lash, right? It's kind of a little smooth there, some areas that might need to smooth out, but truthfully, the blade is so big, it just doesn't matter, right? Uh, it will naturally smooth out over time. There's an enormous amount of shouldering. You see that stop pin right there, huge, it's very deep shouldering there. Um, and then uh, there's no uh, detent lash. The detent itself is okay. It's such a big knife and there's so much leverage, right? It's all right. The detent's not super, it's, it's about medium. And then we have uh, nice, perfect centering, right? Um, this is a huge knife. You have to really, really want a big knife like this. 
the biggest issue, and it's gonna be a deal breaker for some people because it really is hard to get in and out of the pocket, it's gonna be that pocket clip, right? Uh, this knife is not for everybody. It is manufactured in China. Uh, it is manufactured in a premium way, definitely. The fit, the uh, fit and finish, the tolerances, everything here is fine. These are about 260 to 270 bucks, something like that. Uh, M390, okay. Yeah, yeah. Rem remember, you can get M390 on sub $100 knives, right? So let's not put too much stock into that. Um, but uh, it's made well. It's it's big. There's a lot of material here, right? They went out of their way to mill the inside of the uh, titanium for weight reduction, and you did get you do get a milled clip, even though it's not the best clip in the world. And the action is good, mainly due to the fact that the blade is so big, but it is good. Um, this is going to scratch a very specific itch for some people. If you want a big knife, like a big titanium frame lock, right? This will do it. You are going to have a problem with that pocket clip, period. It is going to be a problem, right? I like it. It's a neat knife. It's not something that I can recommend to everybody. Um, that's really all that I can say about it, right? I mean, if you like how this looks and you can choke down the clip, go for it, right? I mean, it's pretty much on par with a lot of what we see. And a lot of companies charging this price are, you know, it's not that like big knife always equal more money and small knife is small money. No, it's not always like that, right? But there is a lot of material here, so much more that it counts for something. And a lot of these companies, right, making, they're, they're making smaller knives with less material, less complexity, and doing stamped clips in some cases for the same price. So it's okay. It's not a mind-blowing price, right? But it's eh, about what I expect, right? That's really all I have to say about this. It's neat, right? Um, but that's it. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. But I don't think I really have anything else to say today. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.